Hi, I'm Billy from the Fanable Podcast Network, and welcome to Straight to Home Video, where we are celebrating this festive holiday season with our favorite holiday classics that never quite made it onto our Christmas wish lists. For Fanable, for the past nine years, we have created original stories for our actual play podcast. But for this series, we're just going to, you know, hop onto that naughty list and roleplay sequels to movies that no one really asked for. Now I remind you that we have defined a film's eligibility with three criteria. First, it can't have a sequel or be a sequel. Secondly, it can't have a rating higher than R. And third and finally, it must have had a theatrical release at some point. But before we reach into the stocking and find out who's getting their Christmas wish, let's meet the cast and see which holiday classic they want to see sequeled. Hi, I'm Dan, and I want to see Jingle All the Way. You know, the one with Arnold. Hi, I'm Billy, and I want the 2015 horror comedy, Krampus. Hi, I'm Angela, and I want a Muppet Christmas Carol. Hi, I'm Jesus, and I want to see Die Hard. That's not allowed. Why? Because you don't consider it a holiday movie? No, it has like five sequels. Oh. Hi, I'm David, and I want to see a sequel to Reindeer Games. We've met the cast, we've gotten their recommendations, and now I need a stocking and someone to do the drawing for me. <laughs> hey, Billy, what am I doing here? Well, it's not the holidays without an old man and a beard. <laughs> Seriously, I'm 35. Oh, Dan. Okay, okay I'm 40. Dan. 42, 42. Okay. Well, Dan, would you like to do the holiday drawing for us? Fine, give me the damn suck. Oh, that's the holiday spirit. And I go follow a lot yourself. All right, let's get this drawing done. And hey, looks like we got Billy's selection, Krampus. Oh, that's great and real convenient for him, I guess. All right, but before we got started on that, let's roll that original 2015 uh, trailer footage. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the kids jingle bells. Merry Christmas! Looks like Martha Stewart threw up in here. This is delicious, honey. A little dry. Well, mine's delicious. Mine's dry. Do you want to trade? It's the It's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Look at oh! With those holiday greetings and greetings. How are we going to survive Christmas with 12 people stuck in a house with no heat and no electricity? Or food. There's plenty of leftovers, Howard. Beer it is. It's the weirdest thing. There's no cars, no people. How long can this keep up? We heard something on the roof. What the hell is this? Saint Nicholas is not coming this year. Instead, a much darker ancient spirit. Those are hooves. Elk or a goat? What kind of goat walks on its hind legs? His name is Krampus. He and his helpers did not come to give, but to take. Everybody, hold on to each other. He is the shadow of Saint Nicholas. Nothing 
bad's gonna happen on Christmas. <laughs>Hi everybody, I'm Billy from the Fanable Podcast Network and welcome to Straight to Home Video, where we are celebrating our favorite holiday classics by butchering them with horrible, horrible sequels. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I'm so I excited. feel like that is an unnecessary value judgment on us. No, yeah, that's no. a very good point. I think that we elevate them. Really? Yes, we are elevating to uh, new depths. So what <laughs> will found, remind me guys, who won the uh, drawing this uh, this time around? Is it was it me and what did I dis- what film did I decide to elevate? It was the 2015 horror comedy, which leads more towards horror than comedy, classic Krampus. Nice. But no cheer. Jeez. Oh. Woo! <laughs> before we begin. Hey, hey, before we begin, let me introduce the system that we'll be using. As you might know, if you listen in, if you've listened to the Fanable podcast uh, before, I'm more of a Chronicles of Darkness kind of guy. But after reviewing the plans and the idea that I want you guys to die, <laughs> I decided to go with the uh, somebody else's classic, which is Angela's End of the World. How dare you? Okay. Oh. How How dare, dare you? Steal my thunder. Yes, <laughs> End of the World by Fantasy Flight Games. If you guys are interested in ending the world with mortal characters and watching them die horribly, you can end the world with the robot uprising, the wrath of the gods, the zombie apocalypse, or, uh, God, what was the, the aliens? Did I say yeah, aliens? You did yeah. not say aliens. The alien invasion. So there's four books from Fantasy Flight. So before I have to start uh, hitching other companies, I'm going to begin. Mm-hmm. Yay. Right. Get Ooh, it before that, let's talk about Casper Mattresses. Nice. I <laughs> love it. Just real quick before we do, and Dan, what? Is this going? I don't know. It was not earlier. It was not earlier. Okay. It is now. Okay, cool. That's cool. all. Let's go. No, it's not doing it, jack it's, shit. It's totally superfluous. There we go. Now it's recording. <laughs> cool. Great. There we go. Great. So all right. Leave that in. We'll start again. <laughs> no. The scene begins with a flurry of snow as it goes past the the camera it's big clumpy almost flaky flake like snow it looks fake it swishes around traveling through a a winter wonderland that is frozen it passes a a cabin that has a glowing warm light inside of it and then suddenly as there's a shriek in the distance that light turns a sinister red the camera continues to follow that snow as it gets to two porcelain elves skating in rhythm and melody around a placid, peaceful, frozen lake. And they continue to spin and spin. And as the camera zooms in closer to them, the, 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 that smile that is on the elf's face begins to crack a little bit as there's, they seem to be in pain and blood begins seeping out of sores in their faces. The camera continues to travel. And it lands on Frosty the Snowman. And there he is with his corn cob pipe and his lucky hat. And as we move closer, we suddenly realize that small carrot sticking out from its nose is not a carrot, but a finger pointing accusingly towards the camera. And then suddenly that finger thrusts out and it's a hand grasping, waving, desperately trying to get out from the inside a Frosty's face. The camera pulls back and we suddenly realize, and we suddenly realize that we're no longer just viewing some weird setting, but this is actually taking place inside of a snow globe. And inside that snow globe is a peaceful scene. The hand holding that snow globe is, uh, belongs to a man dressed immaculately in a suit. And in front of that man is a, a, a table full of people. These are old, well, th- these are every corporate, uh, corporate boardroom type people. Old white men, most likely not having hair. And they're staring at this man. Uh, David, mm. who is this man? What does he look like? Mm. And what is he saying to, according to the uh, banner behind these men, Missile and Marymont Corp. Uh, Michael Dumont is a young man of 25 and boundless ambition. He has a razor blade widow's peak that goes into thick, voluminous black hair. I am not, uh, I am not playing this character only because of his luscious hair. (laughs) (laughs) But he has hair. (laughs) Um, 
and uh, he's wearing he's wearing um, a some might say gauche or gaudy, but he says retro shark skin suit. <laughs> A uh, little on the nose, but he loves it. It's a reflective, like deep blue, and he has a uh, and he has a uh, a tie that is it illustrates mistletoe on, and he's tossing the snow globe back and forth in his hands, and he looks up at the board of uh, old white men. He says, "says gentlemen and now ladies, huh? Hmm, okay, so gentlemen." <laughs> In conclusion, what I'm proposing is not just some sort of new type of Black Friday. We've already got Black Friday. We don't need any more. We've already got Christmas. We don't need any more. But you know what we do need more of is customers, and we need to tell them what they need. And I think what they need is excitement. See, the thing is, I've, I showed you the footage from Walmart. There were 27 deaths, 13 injuries last year. Those numbers tell people something. You want to be in that fucking store. Am I right? (laughs) I'm saying we take those kinds of numbers, but we turn into something a little bit more special. What I'm suggesting is a mixture of Black Friday frenzied shopping and glorious capitalism. And the unbridled, passionate debauchery of Coachella. And we make them kind of fuck until the thing that comes out is like the baby Jesus of the bottom line. Profits. This will get the golden demo of 18 through 35. Guaranteed. And I think the best way we can do that if I make it 21 and up, because we all remember when we were young men. You remember when you were young men. And if you're told you can't go somewhere, you're going to want to be there. So, so let's make a lot of naughty children real happy. So let me get this straight, mm-hmm. says the uh, the president. Mr. White. Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> Again. First, first name White, last name Man with two N's. <laughs> <laughs> let me get this straight. You want to make a Black Friday for Christmas. So people start lining up on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And then at 6 a.m., they enter the mall Mm -hmm. in a frenzy instead of spending it with their family. Yes. I mean, I can show you the I can show you the footage again of all the travel time. Think of what they would be saving that we could even angle it that way. So so they start talking and discussing about, mm-hmm. you know, the pros and cons. And the pros of this is if this takes off, this could be a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But the cons, of course, being uh, people can view this as corporate greed. Uh, it doesn't work out. So they're left with just nothing. So basically to speed this along, because mm-hmm. we are on a timeline. They come back to you, David. Mm-hmm. They call you back into the boardroom. They, they don't even le- let you be part of this discussion. Mm. But they bring you back and uh, they, they usher you in along with your assistant. What is your assistant's name? Uh, Stevens? Stevens, that's it. Yes. Uh, Rubio Stevens. Uh, uh, he's a uh, young, ambitious uh, Middle Eastern boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do say boy because he is 21 and you are 25. So you are older than him <laughs> and wiser. Yep. And he follows you in a matching uh, shark skin suit. Cheaper. Cheaper. It is cheaper. cheaper. You made sure of that. You got it off the skin. rack. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do call him mini-me of you. Yeah. Because he definitely tries to dress like you and be like you. His hair is better. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's from that movie where that guy totally treats women right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Sorry. There's so many to choose from. I know. Well, women. Right. Am I right? What's your name again, David? Uh, Michael. Michael. We've discussed this. It's an ambitious plan. Hundreds of stores opened on Christmas morning. However, we think it's a little too grand. However, we are up for a trial run with one of our malls. Hmm. We'll be in L.A. It is the Twin Palm Mall in L.A. It's, uh, several of our stores are in there. If you can get this off the ground, Michael, let me be frank with you. 
if you if we see the numbers, we will expand this idea all over the country. And as you might be aware, we have a extra seat on the board. And of course, you you are very aware there is a. Mm-hmm. It seems like a light shines down on the empty seat. <laughs> I, I I try not to actively salivate as he brings it up. If if you're right, maybe next year you'll be on this side of the desk. Oh, I'm right, Mister White. Unfortunately, there is one thing we d- we are worried about people viewing this as corporate greed. So we're going to need. Someone on the ground, someone there standing in line, sleeping in the tents, along with all the masses. And we could not think of a better person. Rubio. Absolutely. Rubio Stevens, you'll be there because you'll be following Michael, who uh, you you don't mind, do you? you uh, I mean, you didn't have any big plans for Christmas, right? Uh, no. Uh, well, I do now, sir. Fantastic. So uh, we'll, we'll book you a flight. Uh, New York to L.A. shouldn't be that far. And in a month's time, on Christmas Eve, you'll be with the, the exhorted and, and, and excited masses as they are waiting for, instead of Black Friday, green Christmas. Mm, yeah, it's green. And we're going to do a snap cut to a month later. <laughs> it is the news. It is a woman walking down the, a, a rather large collection of tents and sharing people. And David, you are, to your excitement, people do seem happy to be waiting in line on Christmas Eve for sales, sales, sales at the Twin Pine Mall. Twin Palm? I'm sorry. Twin Palm Mall. Oh, Girl. shit. What mall is this? <laughs> <laughs> Did we go back to the future? Yes. The Twin Palm Mall. And as this uh, reporter is moving down, she's like, hello, this is Jane Johnson of LATV, and we are excited. Oh, and so is the crowd for the green Christmas coming to LA's Twin Palm Mall. Now, of course, we're going to, uh, oh, here is an excited person. Uh, Tell me, what are you hoping to get here? And Dan, introduce yourself, introduce your character, tell us what you look like, and then tell us what he's excited about. So uh, this is this is near the front of the line. Of uh, course, yeah, pretty, pretty close because you've been here. Yeah, because our our protagonist and clearly the hero of the movie, uh, <laughs> one Mister Nick Higgins, is uh, he's he's uh, uh, you know a a portly uh, sort. He's um, in his late late forties, um, and he is uh, refusing to admit it. He's got a balding hair, but he's got like a little uh, rat tail uh, at the back. And, uh, and he is wearing, uh, he's wearing, uh, the ugliest Christmas sweater, ill-fitting. Uh, it is clearly too, 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 uh, too tight for his, uh, his bulk. And he is, he has been here since, like, the day before, the day before Christmas, because he heard there was a sale going on. So he set up, like, a little tent, like mm-hmm. some of them do, a little, like a little pup tent. Oh, well, there's many pl- pup tents. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's, he's first. Yes, and he's he's stepping out of the pup tent as the uh, as the uh, reporter approaches. There is a stream of smoke coming out of the pup tent. Uh, a, a more uh, the pup tent may well be referred to more as a hot box of sorts. <laughs> and uh, and he's just coming out like, <coughs> oh hey, oh you um. Yeah, I mean, uh, they got the, uh, the, 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 the new, uh, headsets. You got the new headsets. Hey, hey, buddy, buddy, buddy. And he, like, smacks the pup tent a couple of times. Yes, and your friend, uh, Donnie, Donnie Douglas comes out, and Donnie Douglas is, uh, he's, he looks kind of like a, uh, miniature version of you. Mm-hmm. He's, someone, someone confuse him with your son. Yes. But he's not. Nope. You just both work at the same IT company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's like, whoa, hey, we're on TV. <laughs> so so yeah they got the new oculus uh the, the new ones that come out that have like a built-in battery and 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 the whole thing on the cameras on the outside so you can see out of them oh so you like playing video games uh, jane says and donnie <laughs> looks at you and you look at him <laughs> yeah we're, we're yeah, getting this for yeah, video games yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, for, it's for the video games <laughs> all right Jane says as she that suddenly dawns on her of what you're talking about, and she moves <laughs> quickly down the line, um, and she moves towards the second tent, which uh, which is uh, and 
we're uh, who can forget uh the person who who is representing the uh, Missile in Marymont Corporation, who is who put this whole thing together, uh, Mister, and she of course turns towards yep. David's character, who is standing outside of his tent in a nice. Uh, it is L.A., so your winter garbs are not actually winter garbs. It, right mm-hmm. now, it is fifty-two degrees and yep. it's at night, so yep. you have a light jacket on. Yeah, uh, Stevens is standing right next to you. <laughs> Michael Dumont of the uh, Mistletoe and Merriment uh, Corporation. And thank you so much for taking time out of an otherwise pretty busy news season uh, in order to uh, come on down here and, you know, see what the people are about. And, and, you know, I think that's really what sets you apart, Jane, from uh, the other people here at LATV. Well, thank you. Uh, But uh, some people, of course, you know, this being a large gathering of people, they are worried about security. But you say you've brought over a security guard. Uh, We Mm -hmm. have uh, a full detail. But one of your guards here is here to give us a brief rundown. He is. He's uh, he's right here right now. And uh, she turns and scooting slowly onto the screen is... Hello, my name is uh, Diego Andrada. I am a tallish, uh, prime in his life, 49-year-old uh, light-skinned Hispanic man with a professional cut hair and the professional uniform of a mall security guard. You do have to wear a, uh, a hat. Uh, some have elf's hats, some have ha- Santa hats, some have reindeer antlers. What, which, which hat are you wearing? Uh, I am currently wearing just a Santa hat. I'm simple like that, simple conservative man. Because you're the boss. I'm the boss. I'm the king. <laughs> I'm the best security guard. Technically, one of two, but <laughs> there are a few. No, but. <laughs> but well, ma'am, I can assure you that despite the hordes outside, I'll, this place will be kept professional. People here will be safe to order to purchase whatever they wish in this particular store. Oh, so do you think there's going to be any trouble? As as people know, that Black Friday can be very riotous, and there seems to be a lot of people. Do you think your people will be able to manage uh, the safety and security? I can guarantee those under my command will handle anything. And I look, and I put my hand on my gun. Anything that comes my way. Keep Christmas for families. Keep. <laughs> Christmas for family. That's- What's this? Well, as you can tell, not only are people excited, but there is a there is a group of people who who don't like what's going on here. Quickly, come along! Yeah. And of course, uh, you might Demont, you might be like, oh no, 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 don't focus on them. But the camera's mm-hmm. already moving, and so it is Jane Johnson. Yeah, it, I mean, it just passes by the. Uh, Diego holding his gun, and then I don't even try to stop him. I just go, that's an unfortunate association. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, the camera moves off, and there's a secondary line. Not so much a secondary line. There's a small camp that has been taking place near the parking lot. Um, And, of course, they got a permit, unfortunately, so they're allowed to be there, and it's protesters. There's about uh, maybe a dozen, two dozen of them, and the person with a bullhorn is? It's a young woman. She... uh since she has a, a permit for the protest, she's not actually here for uh, our, our Christmas celebration. She's underage. She is 19 years old. Uh, she is full on Gen Z, young millennial. Uh, so young woman, uh, fair skin, blonde hair. And uh, she is holding the bullhorn and is, is leading the chant of keep Christmas for families. Keep, keep Christmas, Christmas for families. families. Keep Christmas for families. Keep Christmas for families. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, and the ca- a woman runs, runs up to you and says, hi, and who are you and why are you angry? <laughs> My name is Kylie Harold, and I am angry because our world is burning and on fire and people are here just to buy more consumerist crap made from China that is going to poison all of our oceans and destroy the fish. So, what are you excited about for Christmas? She says to the person next to you, which is your friend? Uh, uh, L. L. Your friend L. She looks a little bit like she she uh, she is a, a bit of a uh, what's her name? Um, Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, she's a uh, bald, uh, has a piercing in her nose. Uh, definitely more a lot of tattoos, though those are not showing. She's wearing a poncho um, and some earmuffs, but she looks a little surprised as the focus is on her, and she's like, um, I-, "I don't know, togetherness." All right, and then they move away as you guys continue your chant of "Keep uh, Christmas for Families." Yep. Can I say that have 
I ordered Rudy around to. Yes. Look at, oh, right. Sorry. Didn't you do it. have Rudy. Yes. Uh, uh, right now, uh, you one of your security guards is walking the line. One of your rookie guards called uh, Rudy. He's Rudy. He's yeah. one of the new guys, and he doesn't have a gun. He mm. has. Uh, he has. He uh, hasn't earned that right yet. He hasn't earned that right. <laughs> no, literally, he's still working through his part. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a taser. Yeah. You know, whatever. And he's just walking out, and occasionally he'll buzz, and it's like, "Everything's fine, boss. Everything's fine." Are you sure? Absolutely. Um, and of course, throughout this entire night, as you guys are just, you know, some people are protesting, some people are just hiding in their tent. Uh, David, your tent is decked out with mm-hmm. TV, uh, it's an inflatable like, mattress. It's like Ka- uh, Capone's uh, jail cell. <laughs> it's like the nicest thing you've ever seen. You're like, this is great, everybody. And then you get into your house, you like lock it up and get away from those people in their shanties. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I lock it up and I look right at Rubio and it's like, did you see that, that protester? I saw a couple of them, sir, but I, I don't think anybody's going to worry. I mean, it's actually... What are you talking about? This is great. This oh. is the best kind of thing we could get. This is eyeballs on us. Also, did you take a look at those protesters? They couldn't have been any older than, what, 18, 19? I told those old bastards. It will make it 21 and over, and it will absolutely draw the youth demographic. Uh, Damn it, I'm good. You are good, <laughs> sir. Would you like an espresso? I would like to. He turns over to the espresso machine that you set up and starts making you an espresso. Yep. It's like sharper image threw up in your. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Dan. It is. Yeah. It is. It's fifty-five degrees outside. Yep. People are cheering because you do have performers who are walking down the line. Some are like a marching band. Some people are just uh, singing into like little microphone boxes. Uh, you actually have the uh, Samantha uh, Samantha Walls. Uh, she's a YouTube star, and she is. She was a big find. Um, she, she is number one on YouTube right now for mm-hmm. her single um, "Christmas Is My Oxy," mm-hmm. and so you have her walking walking down the line just singing that. Um, it's a big deal. It's a great mm-hmm. message for kids. Mm-hmm. And of course, Angela, you are. Uh, Protesting left and right, and Dan, it is vomit. Like I said, it's, it's fifty-five mm-hmm. degrees uh, outside, uh, inside your tent. It's a good sixty with how much buzz is going. Oh, on. Yeah. and you and Don are sitting there. Sixty-nine. Yeah, it's around sixty-nine degrees outside. It's pretty okay, nice. You and Danny, are, Danny, <laughs> four twenty if it's Celsius. You, spend, you guys spent twenty minutes just chuckling about at the joke that you made the two of you. <laughs> so, what are you and Donnie enjoying? Uh, weed, of course. Weed. Yeah, it's, I mean, Wait, what? Basically, <laughs> hey, it's legal. legal. It's legal in California. They are enjoying their legal. They are exercising their right. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you and Donnie have a, a little bit of a tech empire inside here. You have your laptops. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got we've got a little uh, we've got our little Nintendo Switch, and we're like we're friggin' playing Mario Kart. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys are having a fantastic. Time. Oh yeah, this is great. And honestly, David, this is couldn't have gone better. You have the protests. You have the singers. You have people enjoying beverages. But as this started at 7 a.m., well, officially started at 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. and has gone through the day, you're exhausted. A lot of you are exhausted. And by 2, 3 a.m., most of you are going to take a nap. Dan, it's not so much a nap as you and Donnie have no, we eaten passed out a while potent ago. potables. Yeah, yeah we, we, we passed out a while ago. Dave, of course, you, you need to get as much sleep as you could possibly can because you get mm-hmm. bags under your eyes if you don't get at least four hours. So, And I got to um, moisturize, and that takes like two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, so you are definitely sleeping on your uh, mattress, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately. It's a big mattress. It's a queen bat mattress. Um, it's it's good for two people, but you like to stretch out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Steven, uh, he, he has the bean bag that you brought. Yeah, of course. Uh, Day, uh, Angela, you are... Uh, you know, protesting takes time and you've been at it for hours. And so uh, you and your friend, uh, Al, you have a uh, – it is your grandmother's tent that you pretty much – it is barely standing up on its own. Uh, but I was not going to buy something new. Of course. This is it's still It's all good. about reduce, reuse, recycle, and this is on reuse. And, of course, you and Elle, as you climb in, I was like, oh, another tear, and you t- she takes out the duct tape, and it's more <laughs> duct tape than fabric at this point. <laughs> but you guys uh, sleep in your – fall asleep in your – uh, your sleeping bags uh, to the the sound of protesters. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's only a dozen of them at this some point. Uh, you know, a couple of them snuck off to listen to "Christmas Is My Oxy," which is, <laughs> you know, kind of a motivational song for the <laughs> generation. Yeah. And uh, of course, Jesus, you you've been at it mm-hmm. all day. And as you are, are moving through the line, um, you know that you know at the front of the mall, there's a, a small little guard station. Um, it's a nice little setup for you if you need to take a nap. And you know, honestly, at this point, you've got plenty of men. Mm-hmm. And since this is on, you are re- you're cycling through people. No one's going to notice if you just 
Just a, just a bit of a nap. Yeah, you you and Rudy. Yep. You and Rudy. Rudy's supposed to basically mm-hmm. sit in front of the window and uh, stay awake. So if somebody does look that way, mm-hmm. he can nudge you. And you're sleeping on the small little mattress at his feet. All right, perfect. And Rudy closes the blind, so no one should be seeing even him. And as soon as he turns around, I'm already asleep. Of course. You're <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm ever going <laughs> to... <laughs> and you guys sleep. A restless... Sleep, And it's not so much a silent night because you fall all asleep to the sounds of protesting, excitement, Christmas is my oxy, Mario Kart. I don't understand these young kids' music. And then you wake up. And it is freezing. When you went to bed, it was probably 55 degrees, 51 degrees. Of course, damn, 69 degrees. (laughs) But now, it almost feels like... It's nearing zero degrees. And while some of you are wearing some jackets, a a Christmas sweater, you all have blankets, at least for your sleeping, uh, for your uh, sleeping accommodations. It is not enough. Your breath is easily seen. So who wants to wake up first? I will. Angela, you wake up and you are shivering and, and L is kind of stirring next to you as you kind of jolt up. The, uh, Elle, what's what's going on? I, I don't know. And she goes to the tent and opens up the duct tape and, and seeks her. And she's like, oh, my God. And as the tent opens up, snow falls in. What? And you both duck out. Wait, is it from one of the wildfires? Is, is No, she says as she looks around. And it's not ash. There is at least two, maybe three feet of snow. Feet? Feet of snow. It's here. The climate crisis is real. And as she kind of wades through this, she's like, what the hell? And as you looked out, all the lights are off. You can barely see. She takes out her, her like, uh, her phone. Naturally. Turns on your flashlight. You both turn off your flashlight mm-hmm. on your phone, wave it around, and you see a line of abandon tents. A lot of people must have just woken up to the blizzard and just got out. All of your protesters, your friends... They're nowhere to be seen either. Slackers. Mm. Hello. Damn. Yeah. You get woken up by Donnie's like, dude, dude, uh, dude. What? Uh, what? What? It's snowing. Yeah, no, it's California wrong. Suddenly you feel a, a snow slam into your face as fucking hell with snowballs. And as you look, open up, uh, Donnie has opened up the uh, the tent and it's it is in fact Snowing. Two feet of snow. Holy fucking Christmas. What? Yeah, it just starts crawling out of the out of the tent looking around. And as you guys are looking around, David, you join them mm-hmm. as as your Stevens has woken you up. Mm. Rudy kind of wakes you wake up first mm-hmm. and realize Rudy's sleeping. And mm-hmm. as you slap him on the thigh, he kind of jostle awake. And before you even can berate him. Mm-hmm. He opens up the blinds and says, holy crap, sir. I'm just saying justice fights. What the hell? <laughs> you guys all walk out into this black Christmas. It is, again, dark. You all have to have your flashlights or your sharper image pens or your phones or your lanterns just to see each other. And you all gather in this abandoned lot, which is the mall. All the cars are covered with snow. All the tents are covered with snow. There's nobody else but you. And as you look off in the distance, you don't even see the lights from the city. It is a complete blackout out there. And the snow is coming down harder, and it is just getting colder. Can someone tell me what the hell is going on? And now we're going to take a brief recess to check out a message from a fantastic podcast that you should listen to. A long time ago, in a galaxy far away, a group of outcasts found each other in the Outer Rim. A failed Jedi. Well, we don't have to run out right now and beat people up. We can take a half hour for you. A captain without a ship. I suggest you let your Deveronian friend do the talking and you continue to stare at your stump. And a medic with a mysterious past. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I might have been half wrong. We might die. Together, they hope to find adventure and a little bit of redemption. Oh, 
Oh, that's sweet. Hey, one has Tinker Buddies. The Redemption Podcast is a long-running actual play podcast set around the time of the Clone Wars, played using the Star Wars RPG system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Check out the show at www.redemptionpodcast.com, a proud member of the Don't Split the Podcast network of shows. Oh, welcome back. I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. And let's continue the story, the sequel to Krampus. So, guys, you are standing there. And, again, you are wearing winter outfits, but for winter in L.A. So, now that it's nearing zero degrees, you are freezing. It is cold. You you don't know where everybody else went. You assume they probably made a mad rush to their cars in order to, like, start the heaters. But you guys are feeling cold. What do you do? What do you say? Can- so uh, Kylie has wrapped her sleeping bag around her, kind of like a cape, and she's going to get right up in the uh, right up in Michael's face. What did you do, you capitalist pig? This is obviously your fault. You are trying to do some like bring the magic of winter to LA, and this is what happens when you try to mess with the environment. You are what happens when. Sir, I'm really cold. Hold Steven on, says. I'm about to burn a 19 year old, and I want you to take your phone out and get this crispy, this crispy insult. It, it, it's okay, it's re- recording, sir. Oh. All right. You are what happens when we rely on the government to actually educate children, sir. <laughs> I'm not getting any signal. What? There's no signal. He says as he pull, as he shows his phone, and as some of you have taken out your phone mm-hmm. to you know turn on the flashlight, you have no cell service here. Again, it's freezing. You guys are shaking in your boots. Lazy knows as much as I enjoy freezing to death. Let's get inside the mall, perhaps. Yeah. To heat up a little. Of course. Where's your I am global not home? going into that bastion of capitalism to worship at its altar. Then, I am going to my car. Goodbye. Oh, you mean the one that runs on gas? Enjoy your, uh, <laughs> what is this? And I just kind of play with a little snow. Global warming? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Good one. <laughs> So, Angela, you and Elle, you know, huff as you guys turn around. You're kind of holding your sleeping bags as capes as you walk away, feeling a little heroic as you say, uh, feeling a little heroic. Um, and as you're, and you guys are watching. We still have our pride intact, unlike any of you. As you're moving towards your hatchback, which is not too far away, uh, something darts through the darkness between cars. It actually, something hits one of the cars as it runs by, and it starts the uh, car alarm. Beep, 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 beep. Which echoes throughout the night. That's the first thing. That's the only thing you hear. And L looks at you and says, like, "Did you see that?" It's coyotes. Something runs by Big between coyotes. cars <laughs> again. Let's just go. And as you turn back to continue walking, you have your flashlights. You see it. Well, you see something very small and delicate walking towards you. On two, on four legs. And then it comes into view, and you all are seeing this, them closer. It's a reindeer. It's a baby reindeer. And it looks towards the two of you and does. And suddenly behind it, a large hoof steps over it. And a mom an adult, Adonis of a reindeer, stands over its child as if trying to protect it. Very much like a a cub. Uh, Don't go near a cub because of a bear. This thing looks at you with menace. Steam comes out of its nostrils as it's it's clawing, pawing at the the, the, the asphalt underneath the snow. Um, Sorry, Rudolph. And Kylie's going to just back away slowly. And she's like muttering to Elle, like, what are you supposed to do with a rabid reindeer? Is it supposed to make yourself bigger or are you supposed to like... Reindeers. <laughs> reindeers, as she says, as you look around and suddenly at the side of you is another reindeer. And coming out of, from between two cars, two minivans, is another reindeer. They're not quite boxed you in yet, but they kind of formed a, a, a horseshoe around mm-hmm. you. All of them prancing and kicking up snow, some of them burying their antlers in and shaking it at you, blowing the snow in your face. I look at David. Mm -hmm. Was this part of an event or something? No, we didn't greenlight the gritty Bambi reboot yet. (laughs) 
And suddenly, that large Adonis of a reindeer lets out a... And it takes off, charging towards you. Running. Running. I, I, I would like to run. First off, uh, you guys see this. So yep. are you also running? Uh, how many reindeer do I see in front of me? Uh, I don't know. Right now, six. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you all I'm running towards? I'm heading towards the mall doors. Yeah. Great. So the three of you are running. And you don't need to make a roll because you are fine. You, <laughs> you don't need to be the fastest. You just need to not be the slowest. Yep. <laughs> but, Angela, I'm going to need you to ta- make a dexterity roll. And I'm going to do a couple minuses, uh, toss a couple minuses at you. Okay. okay? All right. All right. Um, so I, under my equipment, I have sensible shoes. I will give you that. So giving myself a positive there. I have my cell phone flashlight. Okay. So I can see somewhat where I am running. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would say I, none of my physical features are going to help me here, but nor would they hurt me. I have. Nope. No, nothing is going to hurt you, but I'm going to give you some minuses because it's snowing. Snow. It's definitely snow. You might have sensible shoes, but it is snowing. Yep. And I'm also going to say, uh, God, I don't know. The fear of rain being trampled is a new one. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to throw the the fear of reindeer. Yeah. At you. Don't be grandma. <laughs> <laughs> don't. No one wants to be. grandma. I mean, reindeers have something like you know stampede. Should I also throw you something like that, or is that not yet there? Uh, I would say probably not yet. Yep. Let's, okay. let's let's build up to that. Yes. Okay. So let's go for that. All right. That's. Not terrible. My dexterity, my dexterity is three, so my two succeeds. I canceled out all my stress. Wow! I run. Woo. Yeah, you guys definitely. You and L take off. You you leave your sleeping bags behind you. That's fair. Uh, and one of the reindeer, the little one, runs up to it as you know all the other reindeer pass it, and they starts he starts like slamming his little nubs into it as if like he he's helping. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you're taking off like a bat out of hell, trying to run as quickly as you can towards the the door. Hey Zeus, the the mall is locked because mm-hmm. you haven't, but you have the keys, and mm-hmm. you. I need you to use a uh, do a willpower check right now to to keep yourself from freaking out because you are about to get stampeded by a bunch of blood lusted, angry reindeer. So you have the keys in your hand. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of keys though. Okay, it's Let's one of those things of like, oh, not the key, not the key, okay. got the key. Oh, that's the that's house. Okay. Oh, I've lost that. All right, one. so that, so it's one regular positive die. Can I get another one for observant? I'm you yeah, that's okay, perfect. This is what you do. You build up, so you're observant. Yep. Anything else that might help you? Uh, not really that I can see as far as no. Narrow-minded? No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Narrow-minded? Uh, no, I'm not gonna say. Nah. I'm gonna say uh, you're gonna get one um, negative because it is dark. Okay. Let's go. Okay. And did you you always get one positive? I already put into one positive. So I only have one positive, one for observant, and then just a black. All right. Oh, look at that. I fail utterly. Ah, keys. Why? Cold. Hands. Cold. Oh, cold, cold. Oh, God. Death. I pay you to be faster. I pay you to be faster. <laughs> okay. Pay me more. <laughs> so, I think you take a point of stress. I do, in fact, take a point of stress. You do, in fact, take a point of stress as you can't find the key mm-hmm. just yet. And the reindeer are getting closer and closer. You get one more try at this before you get to meet uh, a very a frosty ending. <laughs> All right. Oh, I make it. Finally. You slam the <laughs> key right in the lock, yeah. twist it around with a, a, a reassuring click. It opens, and you guys pile in. Yep. Of course, you see Angela and uh, – what's her name again? Uh, Michael. What? No, no, I've got Kylie and L is my friend. Kylie and L, which is your friend, they are running as fast as they can. Um, you guys are not going to shut the door on them. Nah. No, no. No, I I definitely I, think about it. Oh, Michael, totally. I can totally see that. Like, close the door, close the door, close the door. Yeah. But – you, you, like, you have two people who are, you know, good people. <laughs> eh. uh, how close is the other radio to them? They might make it. They might. I pull out my gun. This might you? be the only chance I have to use this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's better they go this way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're not gonna, I'm not going to have you waste. Amulet, you do. You pull out your gun. You're aiming at these reindeer as they're charging. Mm-hmm. Um, and the women, the women absolutely slip right in. And you guys cl- slam the door behind you. Lock it just in time as these reindeer, reindeer, like one of them, most of them skid to a stop, but one of them slams right into the glass. But luckily, it's shatterproof, motherfucker. <laughs> and there's just a resounding clung mm-hmm. that echoes through this entire empty uh, of sound mall. Man versus nature. Man wins. They stare at you for a second. You know, again, that snout of annoyance. <laughs> and then they kind of back away. 
And then before sl- running forward and slamming against the door a, f- a few more times, angry that they can't get to you. And then they just kind of recede. But you know they're there. And as you look out into the parking lot, you see that this place, there has to be not just six reindeer. There has to be a dozen reindeer. And this is just from this area. I thought reindeer were supposed to be tiny. It says so in the poem. Oh, my God. You're right. What's going on? Elle says. Stevens is quickly, again, trying to uh, pull out his phone. Donnie is right there next to him, you know, kind of telling him, like, well, did you check the network? No, no. And he's trying his phone. Again, there is nobody. There's no cell network whatsoever. There's no Wi-Fi, which is weird because the mall has Mm Wi-Fi. There's nothing. All right. So we suddenly have no Wi-Fi. I'm assuming everyone's phone signals off. Yeah. Uh, and Nick's, Nick's like standing like close to the door. He's he's got a joint out. He doesn't care at this point. Mm-hmm. He's just like, you, you know, t- t- check me if I'm wrong because I no often am. In the mall. What do I pay you for? Reindeer. What's it out? I'm just saying, reindeer in California. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? Rudy, your uh, rookie cop says, sir, as uh, he's shining a light down. And as you look around, you notice something weird. There, This place was immaculate. Uh, immaculate. It was clean. It was ready to go. Now that you're shining things around, uh, Rudy is shining this his light, uh, his flashlight, line, uh, flashlight around, you notice there's a couple of hats laying on the ground, a couple of coats. Angela, you see a protest sign or two. Uh, from one of your people uh, is broken off in, air, in here as if someone was using it to swing things around. People have, may, had, have, have been here. And you do see a couple streaks of blood on the wall, a bloody handprint here and there. Uh, you might know that a couple people from the line came here first. What the hell happened while we were asleep? I'm resting my eyes. Somebody probably broke in. Some motherfucker tried to cut in line. Yeah, well, that's I mean, what you get. Yeah. So somebody probably, you know what? I bet it was some some sort of uh, some sort of weird anarchist. Like your friends probably snuck in here. Um, first of all, anarchy is a completely different movement. We are anti-fa. You are the fa here. Ding 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 ding. ding. It's appropriate. I was about to tell you to shut the fob. And that it, that sound, as if like it's playing on a really crappy piano, or maybe a child's piano, a toy, echoes through the entire mall. And then that last note, you kind of just wait. You wait for it. And then there's a scream of absolute pain. <laughs> Holy fuck. Guns what, out. What is happening in my mall? If this is a sun, sir, I don't care how much you pay me, I'm going to punch you in the face. I would also sign up for that. So, sir, what do you want to do? I mean, we could we could try the landlines. That's probably a good idea. You would, what, how far away is the scre- was the scream? Far. You don't even know where it's. This yeah. is a big mall. Yeah. Right, yeah so can you can you paint the picture of the mall for us? Like, are we talking like two stories? This is a two story mall. Right now, you are in the area where it is just uh, kind of a lobby where you look down, and if you look up, you see there's a balcony overhead mm-hmm. with multiple stores. If I was to say how many stores are in this thing, I would say mostly like 150. Oh wow! This mm-hmm. is a giant mall. Sure. This is a big mall, and this is why they used it as a test. For this whole thing. It has everything that you want. You have the food court down. There's actually three levels. Food court's at the bottom. There's actually a multiplex that is connected to this place as well. Um, and De- Jesus, you would know this. There's a security office that has a camera that in every uh, – that has connect a camera connected to every uh, mm-hmm. store. So if you're looking t- – and there's also a landline in that area. We're in security. So you guys are, are you guys are following? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This is what I pay him yeah. for. Yep. As you guys are walking – a little unnerved. Dan, you and uh, Donnie are in the back, trailing yep. them, smoking, passing yep. a joint, just, just. left and right. Um, you guys turn the corner, and Donnie and Nick, and Nick. You're, you are you are on your way, following them. A little getting a little high. Yeah. yeah. When we can make. As you pass the escalators going down towards the uh, food court, you smell something 
that can only be described as an angel given aroma. It is the most delicious smell that you've ever sniffed. And you've sniffed a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Donnie kind of pauses and he's looking towards the escalator and he's like, I wonder what that is, man. I don't know, but it sounds, it smells fucking amazing. I mean, they're just kind of going up ahead. We can just go down and come right back up. You know what I love about this? I was going to make you do a willpower check. No. no. First of all, I saw my willpower. I'm looking at my character sheet. I'm not bothering rolling. So, so yeah. That just gives me stress. <laughs> well, Donnie and uh, Nick, you head down. Yeah. Down the escalator. And as you step off the escalator in, on, right into the, the, the uh, food court. Yep. At first, it was just completely dark. There's nothing but that amazing smell. Mm. But then suddenly, like uh, like if it, as if it was a game show, one store lights up. <laughs> All the lights are there, and it says uh, "Grandma's House." And there's pictures of you know gingerbread and cookies. They have a little bit of neon thing going wire, so it looks like the gingerbread's doing a little jig left and right. And there's nobody at the uh, at the counter. But there's something in the back, something glowing. Uh, it looks a little like a, a fire is, uh, is bubbling. And you know the rum is coming from there. And you and Donnie in your high state oh, yeah, walk around the counter. Go right around. And enter the back of Grandma's house. Mm-hmm. You three, uh, do you think you notice that you've lost two of no. your compatriots? I am observant, so probably. You're leading the way. <laughs> We're compatriots. Oh, what compatriots? <laughs> Only three of us. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, Jesus, uh, about a minute later, you turn around and you notice that you are missing two idiots. Two Where are the two high idiots? Uh, probably chasing ghosts with the rest of the Scooby gang. I don't know. I don't care. <sighs> My empathy is one. Well, you yeah, also I'm, could find them easier in the security room. That's fair. No? I'll find them security. Let's go. Yeah, they're probably stealing something. Keep an eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so rude, Elle says, before following, you know, quickly behind the security guard. <laughs> as anti-authority as she is, now that there's, like, bad crap happening, she's glad someone is is following their Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> so you guys are, you move towards the security office, and as you get to the door... It's locked. Mm. And of course, you, you do your key card. Yep. doesn't work because there's no electricity, it seems, to be working through this. But lucky for you, they also have a manual key. Mm. So you, you open it up, you push it forward. And though there was no electricity for the key card, you see there's all the screens in front of you that is showing images. But mm-hmm. the first thing you notice, and you're a little bit relieved, is you see the back of a security jacket as one of your guards is standing there. And you see there's an elf hat hanging from their, the back mm-hmm. of their head, and they're just standing there staring at the screens. They're back to you. Huh? Huh? Oh, finally, someone. Can you tell me what the hell's going on as I walk forward? As you go, turn around, this person kind of wobbles as if they're kind of losing balance. Mm-hmm. Their midsection goes left, their top section goes right, um. and then they spin around completely. And the first thing you notice is that there's a shotgun in their hand. The second thing you notice is it's not a person. It's three little people in a security coat. <laughs> and now we pull out the rules for my game. It's a whole new thing. <laughs> it is. And the third thing you notice, they're dressed like elves. All three of them. And as they spot you, there is a wicked smile on their face. And no one's like, oh, boy. <laughs> Dashing through the snow, and he runs, and he's firing. <laughs> so yeah, he's going to take uh, take a shot at you guys. Okay. All right. So That's fair. I am going to. Um, I drop my phone. So let's get the rules for three elves in a trench coat. Security coat. Security coat. <laughs> All right. So they're aggressive. Mm. So uh, they're aggressive, uh, and uh, they are accurate. Now, they have a couple of minuses. They're uncoordinated. Mm-hmm. They are also, uh, the shotgun has two negatives. Mm-hmm. So, ready to go on that. They're going to try to take a shot at, you were the first one yes, there, Yes, was. Now, the thing I didn't describe, everybody has an NPC here. Every last one of you. Mm-hmm. If you ever take a lot of damage, 
any damage, and you just don't want to take it, you could basically throw... In character, you don't throw the person in front of you, unless you want to. Mm -hmm. But you could say, I want uh, you to take narrative control. And what, your NPC will immediately take the shot for you. And no matter how small the shot is, uh, they'll die. Mm -hmm. This is one and done. I'm not counting mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, if you take a lot of damage, or you take a lot little damage, you can always have someone else mm -hmm. be your hero shield. All right, Pete Donnie. Yep. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they hit. Oh, boy. They hit, but they got like... Oh, wait. No, no. They didn't hit. Yeah, oh, I was okay. going to say your blues were your positive dice. Okay. No, they did hit. I mean, oh, they... One they, shot hit. Yeah. One shot hit. So, with that, uh, Jesus, they are taking a little bit of stress from the spinning around right. as they got. Uh, how's seven points of damage done? Of stress. Would you like me to take narrative control? No. Are you sure? That could kill you. You only get nine points of stress, David. I know. Mm, Great. I'm taking the hit. As you step <laughs> forward, uh, yeah, the gun goes off and you hit, get hit with seven points of mm -hmm. damage and you s are thrown back at, and, and into the wall. Yeah. That's uh, physical, right? That yes. is physical stress. I am, yeah, I'm, f I am slammed back with a shot to my gut. What the f and I'm going to immediately take a... You are stunned oh, okay. for like a yeah. round, but I'm going to let... Uh, who else wants to go as, as he's going to load up uh, again another shell? But yep. Jesus, you've taken your shot. He, you've taken your yep. gut shot. What the f***? Blood's coming out of my mouth. You, you can go the next time. Okay, but makes sense. You're a little stunned. Right <laughs> who wants to go? <laughs> You two. Oh, you well, two. Are. Help your fellow man. It's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you two doing? Uh, I feel like it's... Uh, I'm, I'm going to close the door. I'm going to close the door. Oh, wait. Uh, he's inside. Oh, he's still inside. Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want. Uh, this, is, this is tough. Um, I'm going to grab... Uh, if he's still inside, but he said he was knocked against the walls at the wall right next yeah, to the door. Yeah, uh, his gun did fall. It's near his hand, but mm -hmm. it's, you see his gun. I have no idea what to do with that, so I'm going to grab his arm and pull him. Can out. I say Rudy's just standing there shocked? Yeah, well, Rudy's okay. stunned. I okay, mean, he, he is a he's a security guard at the mall. <laughs> yeah. He's not dealing with elves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or shocking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you're you're trying to drag him away. Hey, uh, David, what are you doing? You do see the gun nearby. Oh hell yeah, go for the gun. Yeah, you grab the gun, you aim it towards these uh, these uh, children. I'm about to shoot three children. <laughs> they, they, they don't look. Merry they do not look like children. They look like small humans. Yep, that is what children are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but David, do you want to take a shot? Uh, he thinks about you, like you know, eyes side down the barrel, and starts to squeeze the trigger, and he's just like, "The fuck am I doing? I don't, I don't get paid for this. I'm gonna slam the door shut." All right, so uh, leaving Angela and oh um, no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna yeah. I guess I'm going to keep it open and wait for her to save. Uh, Gustavo or whatever oh, his did, name so is. So did, did you take the gun? Or yes, not? I did. Okay. Uh, Jesus, what do you want to do now that you these people have gone? Uh, it's now your turn. Okay. Um, I'll inside or outside the security room right uh, there. She's dragging you, so next... Like half and half. Yeah, but yeah, my gun's gone from my hand, right? Yeah, you can try to take it back if you want. Uh, well, so we'll be able to shoot if I try to take it back? You can, yeah. So okay. You can I, I you take it from your hand and I try to aim for the kids. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Angela, um... Tell me, does he have any minuses at this point? Uh, no, no, he does not. Oh yeah, because he's not taking. Because I haven't taken the trauma yet. You yep. can't take a trauma yet. Okay. okay, so yeah, so take a shot. So uh, yeah, your gun. So the is... pistol adds one positive die. One positive. Yes. Okay. And uh, whatever see, else you want to try. Uh, to not for yeah. this character. I have nothing for shooting. So uh, uh, okay, minuses. Uh, mm -hmm. It is just uh, it's dark and you're bleeding. So that's one or two extra dice. Two. All right. Shoot you little stupid. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I make it. Oh, and actually that cancels out, but I take a stress, but I still make it. So you are, you are too stressed from being dead. One, right? one stress from being dead. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, you aim and you fire. Bang. As I'm being dragged away at one of the elves. Yep. Okay, so you shoot the elf. And I'm going to say, I'm going to help you out. You shoot the elf holding, the middle one who's holding the gun. Yeah. So you fire at him, absolutely take him out. He He's blown away and the others crumble on top of each other mm -hmm. as they're dragging you away. Um, and then the other two stand up, start laughing, and they jump for the gun, and they start kind of wrestling for the shotgun of who gets to get to have the shotgun next. Mm -hmm. Who goes next? 
So, Angela, you're dragging him away? Yes, I want to get uh, Diego all the way out of the security room. Nice. I'm going to uh, make a quick roll. Oh. Okay. Who the hell's Diego? <laughs> the shotgun goes off again. That- oh, great. As you realize, as the guys are wrestling for the shotgun, it goes off in their hands, and one is blown against the wall on accident. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one looks at the fallen brother that accidentally got shot and starts laughing in amusement. And then he looks towards you guys, lashing again, and then he presses the gun against his face, hits the trigger. I'm a jack in a box! <laughs> and he's dead as his, as the gun goes off and kills mm-hmm. himself, leaving three dead elves. Nice. The elf community really needs to address their suicide rate. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are horrified, by the way. Yeah. Obviously. I'm in pain. Okay, Jesus, um, you are absolutely in pain, completely Mm -hmm. bleeding out. Uh, Rudy immediately runs to you, and he's trying to help you out. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what do you do? Like, how how, how do you – you need to take some damage Mm -hmm. from this. Yeah, I'm going to convert my stress into a trauma, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, for each full line of um, mm-hmm. of stress, so you're definitely have to ha- still have two left because that's a, a partially right. filled line. Um, well, you one can, left actually, technically. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, no. So you, no. these two would stay filled in. Oh right. You're right. Sorry. You're right. No. Um, but you could remove up to two full lines of stress and either take two one day traumas or take one one week trauma. You're taking one week trauma. Is <laughs> okay. Okay. So all right. You have a one week trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, gut shot. Yep. God. So yeah. now that acts as a negative feature any time that he's doing a physical role where it makes sense that a gut shot mm-hmm. that he's recovering from would I, be a problem. I am hard pressed to think of a role that would not be hindered <laughs> by the fact you got <laughs> shot in the stomach. Did I just get shot by Santa's little fucking helpers? I don't know, sir. Oh, my God. And as Rudy is trying to quickly bandage you up, uh, David Mm -hmm. and Angela, you guys are staring uh, at the screens. And what you see in front of you uh, is an assortment of um, holiday-themed horrors. Uh, At one point, you see you do see people in Angela and David. You might recognize a couple of them. Uh, They're being uh, they're sitting in a circle, crying as they are slowly playing a jack in a box. And every time it, it gets to the point, like every once in a while, they stop. And you see something like, nudge them. They, they pass it to the side. You don't see what's nudging them, but they keep on passing the jack in a box. A couple turns, a couple turns, a couple turns. Stop and then pass it to the side. And finally, one person does a couple turns, a couple turns, and the jack in the box pops open. And it's it's not so much a jack in a box. It's almost like a giant centipede. Just pops out, grabs their head, rips it off, and then goes back. Yeah. And that says, uh, that's the pay less. <laughs> so you this see, is as normal got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see a, a, a screen that shows the movieplex and inside the movieplex there are probably two dozen people that are tied with tinsel to their seats and their eyes are taped open with holiday themed tapes and you see on the screen what's playing is a, a wonderful life and occasionally you'll see an elf or what looks to be an elf uh, walk by and spray something in their eyes to keep them moist. And these people clearly are crying. Uh, they've probably been watching this for a bit. It is not so wonderful there. You see on another screen, uh, and, uh, and a, a reindeer is marching through uh, the parking lot, uh, occasionally slamming its antlers against the side of cars. You see one walks, spots the camera and walks towards it, climbs on top of like to an SUV to get to it, and it rubs its red stained nose against the camera, leaving a blood streak across it. Then it darts off. And then the last camera is you see Santa's village. Something is on the screen. Something's sitting in Santa's sleigh throne. But every time the camera tries to focus on it, it just it, it wobbles. It, it's staticky. And then suddenly it seems like the thing notices you looking at it. And it growls and then just vanishes. The last screen that you see is a pair of familiar stoners walking towards something that says Grandma's Home. And as they enter the kitchen, that warm, glowing light turns into a sinister red. And you know that the horror is just about to begin. There is no... Hey, hey. Oh, sorry. And we'll be back after a brief word from these wonderful podcasts. 
Ah, hello there. We are the Course of Tea and Dice, an actual play podcast where mostly British people play role-playing games and both drink and review tea. Do you like horror games? We have many, including a full and extensive playthrough of Horror on the Orient Express. Do you like comedy games? We have plenty of those as well, including Three Goblins in a Trench Coat and Discworld. Do you like action? Dressed in Files or Blood and Honor? We have you covered. Do you like horror games that end up being comedy through no fault of our own? Yes, we have those too. The Ferret Heist in our vampire game, for example. All in all, we have games for all tastes, which we put a distinctly British flavour on. So, if that sounds appealing, drop into the course of tea and dice.net, or find us on iTunes, Podchaser, or Podbean, and join the fun. Chin chin! Oh, yeah, that sounds like a fantastic podcast. Please make sure to check them out. Okay, Jesus, we cut back to your group. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you are bleeding, but you kind of stopped some of the blood. Rudy shoved his jacket into the wound mm-hmm. and kind of taped it shut. Yeah. But get, moving around will be very hard. You guys go ahead. I'll stay inside the, I guess, on top of the corpses of the little people uh, to look ahead from the security office. Oh, so much pain. So right there, you've definitely tried the phone. You've picked up yeah. the phone to call for help. Mm-hmm. No, of course, mm-hmm. there's, there's not even a dial tone. There's nothing. There's, it's just cut. Mm. Um, so Rudy, uh, he cakes out a walkie-talkie, he hands it to you, he takes it himself, and is like, are, are you sure, boss? Rudy, it's up to you. I can't handle this gun anymore with this gut shot I got in the line of duty. But I believe you have it in you, Rudy. You're a bit young, but I think... Have you ever held a gun? I'm sorry, like, what the fuck is happening right now? Yeah. We're having a moment, sir. Uh, yeah, I was a part of the, uh, yeah, yeah, I felt a gun, sir. Good. I believe in you. Go out there and help them. Okay. And he, do you give him your gun? I'll give him the gun. Okay, so we are officially going to change Jesus. Jesus has now basically decided that he is, that our, 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 our old man has turned over, uh, has taken, taken over Rudy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has established, you guys are establishing something that you can occasionally call on, which is, uh, Diego's, uh, detail, which is he, since you are, he is, a man in the chair and watching things occasionally can, he can mm-hmm. contact you and tell you stuff to do. Okay. And we're, so what are you guys doing? Uh, you've seen all this Christmas horror. What do you guys want to do? I know this mall backwards and forwards. There is no store called grandma's house. You've got to, you've got to help them. Then they're going to Rudy. Says, says, says Rudy. Oh, sorry. I'm Rudy now. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to. We, I, we've got to go help them. They, they're going to get killed. I mean, help them. There's a lot of people that needs help. Says Diego as he waves his hand towards the Christmas horrors. But they're the closest. Oh. David. Yeah. As you're looking around and you see that there is no way out of this place, you do spot something. There is an SUV that was going to be the grand prize. <laughs> At first, they were suggesting you put it right smack dab into, uh, you suggested it should be smack dab in Santa's village, but Mm -hmm. that would have been dumb because that would have been, it just would have clashed. So the corporation, corporate moved it down more towards the lobby area, uh, the secondary lobby, not the one you came through. The problem is you decided that, no, it was a good idea. And the keys to the SUV are in a, uh, in one of the presents under Santa's village. Now, there are, there are horrors happening around here. There are monsters outside, but you think a reindeer probably can't outrun, it can't an escalate. <laughs> an escalate. And it's an SUV. I mean, it's, it's an LA, it's built, uh, it is an SUV in LA, but it's built for other places. Mm-hmm. You spot it as if there's a beacon, like right there, and it looks totally fine. Nothing's disturbed it. I think we can get out of here. What? Yeah. I think we can get out of here. That car, that car down uh, the, through through this monitor. Check it out. It's a brand new 2020 SUV. It, it it gets like seven miles to the gallon. That's not the point. It's a. I know where the keys are to this thing. This runs. This thing's all souped up. It's got nitrous and all kinds of nonsense inside of it. Well, the idea was it was supposed to be closer to Santa's village so that when kids would sit down, they would see the car and feel poor. But apparently that's not the Christmas uh, like feeling. So corporate fucking moved it to this bullshit area. But the keys are still in Santa's village with the pores. 
You oh. are a horrible human being. My God. Do you want the fucking car or not? Of course we want the fucking car, Diego says. <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. That's the goddamn Christmas spirit. Okay. You get the keys. You all got to go get the goddamn keys. I will try to... I'll lock the door behind me and I'll try to figure out what the hell's going on here. Uh, uh, Rudy. Yes, sir. Check the clo- Check the weapon locker. See if they're... Right. Yes, sir. And I, I rush over and try to unlock it and open it up. You, you unlock it, open it up. There's nothing but batons in it. Is the, the shotgun, guns are the guns are gone? Is the shotgun the elves are using still there? Yes. Okay. It has three shots. All right. Shotgun. Okay, so you have the gun and the shotgun. Yep. Plus one to elf killing. Who has? Does anyone here know how to use a gun? Goddamn right, I do. Hand it over. <laughs> I've been shooting at. <laughs> <laughs> I've been shooting at the poor. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy squints. Give him the goddamn gun. We don't got time for this. <laughs> yes, sir. And I hand you the pistol. What? A- Okay, good. L- 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 there's L- no reason for that weapon to exist in L.A. I don't care. Um, it, there's a reason right now, okay? Elle says <laughs> as she raises her hand, and Stevens is standing right next to her looking very scared as well. Pistol is one po- extra positive die and plus three damage. Cool. Negative two plus five. Negative two plus five. Of the shotgun, yeah. Yep. Just, okay. You guys got to get going. Looks like Santa Village is pretty clear. But what about the guys that were down in the restaurant? I don't... There's a lot of people that need help. And cut to... Dan. Yeah. You and Donnie walk in, and it, it's, a, it's a magical Willy Wonka-like expression. Hell yeah. Experience as you walk right in, and you see like a giant boiling pot. It is stirring itself, what? and the oven's on. And you look around, and suddenly you get excited because the gingerbread... Are baking gingerbread? Oh hell yeah! And it's How like much did you do, 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 It's like it's the it's the dance of the sugar plants fa- of plum uh, sugar plum fairies. Dun, 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 dun. And some of them are like diving off the side of shelves and hitting like those giant um, uh, frosting dispensers and frosting shooting out. And they're just making more of them. And they're all dancing and having a good time. Well, it's like every time a new sheet comes out of the oven, is it like the Sorcerer's Apprentice and they <laughs> pop up? Yeah, and, join they, in? and everybody cheers because they have more friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah! 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 And they spin around and they continue. <laughs> They're baking more and more and more friends. This is amazing. And as you- soon as you talk, the music, it's like a record screech. Uh, and they all turn towards you and Donnie. Which is weird because you've baked a lot of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Hey buddies. Uh dun 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 And they're all just marching towards you guys. Some of them are hopping off shelves. Dun 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 and they're moving quickly towards the two of you. And as you back up, suddenly you hear something jump over, like you feel it hit the side of your head as it the air hits the side of your ear, as you realize a a large a large gingerbread has jumped off a shelf. Past your ear and hit the lock behind you on the door. <laughs> and you kind of, so you back up a little bit and the door is locked. It's as quick as quickly unlocking it, yep. but it, you fumble as you are being swarmed by a bunch of gingerbread and they're going to attack first. Fair. Fair. So they're going to jump on, uh, they're going to attack. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So gingerbread, uh, their feature, they have a swarm. Mm hmm. They're climbers, and they're definitely trying to get on top of you. And uh, candy buttons. You no, know, I think that's it. I think. And then, so the negatives I would say for these are: um, what would be a negative for them? Delicious. <laughs> they're climbing on top of a high man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Dan. Uh, what what features do you got that I can use? Uh, I mean, I got munchies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll give them two negatives. It's on my sheet. Our plan was two negatives, two positives. So the positives are the blue. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, they got on top of you. Uh, They take yeah. Uh, A couple of them are squished as you are like slapping them away, and they are squishy, which is our game of negative. Yep. Um, And but one of them, they they go up. They go up on you, and uh, you he. You turn, look down on your shoulder, and he's pulled off his gumdrop, and he throws it right into your face, and it hits you right in the eye. Uh, you are taking uh, just one point of damage. 
All right. As as one stress as you get gumballed. <laughs> 17 damage. <laughs> uh, Dan, so they are swarming. Donnie's screaming as he's like just batting them all left and right. Yep. They are climbing on you like ants though yep. at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Nick just yells at Donnie. He goes like, get the door open. I was born for this. <laughs> and he just starts grabbing the little gingerbread man off of himself. Like, oh, baby, you were <laughs> born to munch. Yeah, oh exactly. <laughs> it goes from Christmas music to like Godzilla music. Yeah. It, you don't need, you need to roll. It's weird. It's like they were made for this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, um... I need you to make a... Uh, I will make a okay. roll. <laughs> <laughs> How much vitality do you have? Uh, three, oddly enough. Okay, so you take a bite. And it's and I'm just going to say, uh, this is a su- successful physical attack on their part. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you know what? You make an attack. I want you to make an attack to see if... Sure. And tell me if you get any stress. So uh, they're going to get a... You get a negative. Yep. And this is a negative. They're tasty. Yep. And they're squishy, so you get two negatives. But tell me what two positive, because you're right. attacking so with your mouth. these are two negatives, then I get my one die just to start with. Mm. Yes. Um, let's see. I, I feel like Munchies a Munchies plus. is yeah. a plus. I'll give so you a Munchies plus. is going to be a plus for this one. Because you've eaten a lot of stuff, and this, you need a... <laughs> this is the yeah. second weirdest thing you've eaten. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't think hand-eye coordination might be. Oh, yeah, you're oh, grabbing yeah. them. All right. Absolutely. You yeah. got it. Another... Popping them into your mouth. Yeah. yeah. So Pulling three positive, two buttons. negative. You've got this. Yeah. Let's go. So try to get them under your... Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, come on, uh, Nick. Okay. And yeah. what, what am I rolling under? My dexterity, vitality. Yeah, vitality. Dexterity, is, dexterity, uh, is dexterity for attack. attack. Okay, mm-hmm. good attack. Let's see here. Okay, so nice. that's three mm-hmm. successes and well, one oh. of the you know two successes and one stress. All right. Not okay. Bad. Dan, tasty treat. A successful physical attack on a character's mouth will result in a permanent loss of one vitality. As fair. So you lower your vitality permanently by one as you shove a couple in your mouth. And this could have gone so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it feels like it's punching all the way down. Uh. We've all had tequila. <laughs> <laughs> but you you do. You slam a couple more in your mouth. Mm. Now they're going to do their swarm attack mm. on, on you, Dan. As, on your colon. As, as you. <laughs> From the inside? We've uh, all Dan, been there. Uh, you, I'm going to give you munchies. I'm going to give you hand coronation coordination to yep. swat these away. Yep. If they're negatives. Yep. I'm going to give them... Okay, so that's two negatives. I'm going to give them their swarm attack. I'm going to give them their tasty attack. And I'm going to give them... They're uh, linked mines because they're all coordinated at once. And I'm also mm-hmm. going to give them their climbing because they're jumping at you. Fair. So a there's a lot of positives. This is, well, this is their big thing because they're all about getting in that mouth of yours. Yeah, fair. Uh, so their uh, vitality. I'm sorry. Yeah. They are their going. Their dexterity. dexterity. Yeah, their dexterity is two. So. Oh, that's. Two. There's just one. One. And three stress for them. Three. Uh, Dan, uh, yeah, three stress. So, so, so I, ki- I killed many ripping, of them. Yeah, as you're ripping them apart, you take another bite into your one, and you take another uh, minus. So my vitality is down to one. Your vitality is down to one. So Dan, unfortunately, at that point, uh, once they get down, you get down to that point, you feel, oh no, your body is just it's filling with warmth. Mm. Pure adulterated warmth. Now, Dan, I'm going to. Uh, you could still play this character and try to get away, or you can let me take narrative control. And yeah, you can, go and ahead you'll play take... Donnie. Uh, hmm. No, I like and I'll make... give Donnie. Uh, I'll give Donnie. Uh, 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 I'll give Donnie an award. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sure, I'll, let Don, I'll let Donnie absolutely escape the situation without making any more rules. Sure, why not? You begin feeling nice and warm, and as Donnie. Now you, Dan, rips mm-hmm. open the, the door and runs out. You tur- Donnie turns towards and he sees his friend Nick. And Nick is stumbling back towards the ovens. And he has a big dopey grin on his face. Yeah. And he falls down into a large, giant, large kind of layer pan. And he just kind of spreads out. And this layer pan is almost like something you would see in a morgue. And you see all the gingerbread bouncing and dancing along, and suddenly it starts 
going towards the oven. And then chanting, one of us, one of us, one of us. And Donnie, you definitely take a step towards your friend because he's your friend. No! But then he opens his mouth and gumdrops begin pouring out of his mouth. And goo starts coming out of his ears, frosty in his eyes. As well, I'll leave it just at that. <laughs> and just be in very much like a Willy Wonka situation where Violet's turning violent, you begin to expand and expand and expand. And just as they close the oven, pop. And Danny, Adani, you you close the door. Yep. And you're <laughs> running. <laughs> Lizzie well, died like he lived. <laughs> <laughs> Fully baked. <laughs> yes. I was yes. waiting. Uh, <laughs> we yes. all had one ready. <laughs> like I could see. Yep. Okay, so we're playing fast and loose with the rules, but I don't care. Having fun. Mm-hmm. Yep. As you three, uh, Rudy, uh, Steve, uh, as the actually five of you, L, E, uh, L, Kylie, Kylie, Steve, uh, your assistant Stevens, mm-hmm. uh, you, Michael. Uh, Michael, Michael, and of course Rudy are running towards Santa's village. Uh, suddenly coming up the escalator, uh, barreling up the escalator as you guys have clearly decided to go towards the, uh, the presence more mm-hmm. than just, you know, saving people. Mm-hmm. Totally, honestly, the right call. <laughs> uh, you see Donnie. Just coming up the stairs, which the escalators aren't working. Of course he's, uh, 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 they, he's, oh, yes. <sighs> Um, we need to keep going. <laughs> Where, where's, where's the other guy? That's a oven baked. Uh, oh, he got high? Okay. Here? Now? No, he's... There's no the smoking cookie. in the mall. The cookies! The cookies got him. The cookie... The cookies! Okay, we're moving. Come on. Let's just... Right, Maybe let's there's go. a mystery you can solve when we're there or something. Come on. Uh, That's your, like, third Scooby-Doo reference. I think you're very unoriginal. That was the last time I ever watched anything for kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are quickly moving towards Santa's Village. And yeah, you you, you kind of stop. And Santa's Village is right in this middle of this mall. And you stop at the uh, the arches, the green and you know, the red arches that sparkle as the lights hit them. If there was lights, you have flashlights at this point. And it is a completely dark environment. In the light, this would be festive and wonderful. People would probably have carolers and laughter and everything would be wonderful. But now it just seems all those buildings, all those little village, the village, uh, cardboard villages, it just looks empty and scary and filled with shadows. But the good news, there's no movement, it seems. Right in front of you is simply Santa's village. There's the tree. Kind of deep within Santa's village. But lighting it up is a single star on top of the tree. And that star travels down and you see an assortment of presents just waiting for any lucky children to come near it. This altar to the worst of our capitalistic impulses at the holiday season is disgusting. Uh, you must okay. be fun at parties. Okay, I'm going to keep a, <laughs> keep a watch out. Uh, sir, Michael, you might as well. And someone else get the presents, and I'm just looking around. Rudy's looking around to, for any threats. Which present is it in? Um, oh, right, you would know. Sorry. Uh, it's, a, it's, in the, it's in the one that has a tag, and it says, for Michael. It's dark blue. It's my favorite color. It's got a little uh, little bells on. I know it's a, I know it, I know I know I I, I was the one that wrapped it. I can get it. So, Steven, so Steven. Stevens. For a second, yeah. I thought it was Alan. I was like, "Excuse me." <laughs> Steven says as he's very nervous, but he stands up. Yeah. Well, then go get it alone. No, take this guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why we're here. We're here to get keys so we can get a car and get out of here. Okay, that that tracks. Yeah. So yeah, him and uh, uh, yeah, Donnie and my uh, and, B team, and Steve, B team, B team, B team, the B team. <laughs> so the three, the four of you stay back. L, uh, Kylie, mm-hmm. Michael, and Rudy. Mm-hmm. You guys are kind of like looking around, and Donnie and uh, Stevens walks up, and you pause at the tree. Yeah. You, you, it's it's that one over there. He says, pointing towards a patch of. Presence. Okay, cool. So go get it. It's your presence. <laughs> so let's roll. Uh, <laughs> let's do charisma versus empathy. He's going to be using, uh, I guess, uh, 
Oh, holy so, shit. Okay. I've got Who's the, who's the uh, attacker here? Uh, I, mean, I guess he is. Who? Donnie? Yeah. Uh, so then just Donnie rolls. Donnie okay. rolls uh, charisma. Okay. Uh, can I have Stevens, by the way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love a Mexican standoff underneath a giant Christmas tree. Right, go ahead. Uh, okay, I mean, the, my only feature is loyal, so I don't think that helps. But Okay, so what you, uh, you get one point because you're a PC. Yep. So one. And, uh, yeah, you get, uh, he's, uh, everything will be fine, he says. He's a terrible liar. All right. So he's going to get a negative. So, uh, so it's a negative. Uh, but you get another positive because of him. All right. And, uh, yeah, and I'm just going to give you one negative. Just because. All right, yeah. Yeah, that's a good wow. roll. So I got one stress, but I got two successes. My charisma is three, and I rolled two twos. Yep, he's. You convince him mm-hmm. as you kind of you kind of debate who goes for the presence, and right. he's like, "All right, yeah, one stress." So yeah, it's it's a stressful discussion. Like, no, you, no, you, <laughs> no, you. But then finally, he kind of winces as he's loyal. He's he, he quick. Oh no, you're loyal. He's he quickly moves towards the presence, and reaches out. And just as he's about to grab, he grabs onto the, the package that says Michael. Nothing happens. He lets out a deep breath and turns towards you guys and says, I got it. And suddenly the present at his heel opens up its mouth. Yes. <laughs> and bites down on his ankle. Oh. He drops the present that says Michael at his feet as he screams out in pain and falls back. And a horde of presents suddenly open up their oh. lids and it is filled of sharp teeth. Ah. And they just begin biting down on him. And he's like, sir, help me! I run over. I I, I run straight for uh, straight for Rubio. <clears throat> Rubio! Rubio! Help me, sir! Rubio! Distract them! And I grab the case. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, what are you doing as the tree is uh, alive and consuming children? Uh, I, 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 wait, I saw this in Mythbusters, and he uh, g- grabs his, uh, his, uh, lighter and tr- tries to set the nearest tree or gift oh, on fire. No. Oh, Jesus. Damn, I'm just going to give it to you. Yeah. The tree lights up like a mother. <laughs> like, uh, like, <laughs> is that, yeah, like, thank God the news wasn't there. Uh, thank God, no, there's a reason there's no smoking. Yeah. <laughs> in this fall. yeah. Because the moment you put your lighter out towards this tree, it explodes as if it's in, it's encased in kerosene. Yeah, I mean, the corporation, like, cheaped out and got, like, a really dry tree. Mm. Of course and they did. The tree lets out a shriek. <laughs> As- I didn't see that in Mythbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the sap burning. <laughs> As the tree is ignited, it wakes up and starts flailing what? around. What? <laughs> Wake up! It wakes. It ha- it, its limbs reach out and grab onto the nearest Santa standoff village, like the standoffs, and they engulf in fire. Rubio. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Burns along with it. Burns along with it. I, I, I You're fired, fire, Rubio. <laughs> and as this, definitely this fire uh, takes hold, suddenly, next to you guys, uh, now that you see the fire is spreading, you're starting to see more of the, you see more of the lay of the land, the lights. And you notice, hey guys, I gave us light. <laughs> and you notice the, uh, the snowman that was kind of hidden by the shadows. And as the light pops back and it kind of illuminates the camera has you know you guys are all staring in horror as this like Christmas tree is going nuts this is just you know Rudy and Kaylee and L. and then you just the camera sees the snowman turns its head towards you and the next thing you know it says Aah! as if screaming as it realizes it's actually alive <laughs> and it raises its its branches and it's going to take a claw at um Rudy. Of course. No, wait. No, actually, I meant... Kaylee, that was you, actually. <laughs> Kylie. He's going to, Kylie, it's going to try to claw at your back. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to use its dexterity to attack, and you're going to use... And, uh, so it just attacks. If, it, it, yeah, if exactly. it succeeds, then I take the stress. Right, right. I'm sorry. I, I, I get how to do this. So it's dexterity. I need three uh, more. Wow. Yikes. Oh, wow. Okay. So oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I did it wrong. So basically, uh, a natural strength. Giant. Yeah. Does uh, a giant give two? 
Uh, yeah, it does. Thank you. <laughs> it's very nice of you. It does take a negative die because its branches are hard to... And I'm going to say it is... Uh, uh, it's it's wrathful, so it's not really thinking. It's just going crazy trying to hit at whatever. Oh, maybe that inspirational quote from Gandhi you have tattooed across <laughs> your shoulders will help. So, okay, so... Hey. So that takes that. That's a stress on it, but 4-2-4 four, four, still hit. It's a dexterity 6. Mm. So, Angela, you take uh, four points of damage as it claws at the back, unless you want somebody else to take that. Uh, I, I think I think I'll allow... L to take it. L says, look oh, out! No. She steps forward and suddenly razor-sharp branches go through her, and then she turns towards you, confused, and then she peels to the <laughs> side. No! Peels forward, and then just collapses into three pieces. No, L. Oh, damn it. All right, drop it all up. Drop it all up. <laughs> Give me L. Are you monsters happy? L never got a oh, shake. Yeah. So yeah, you guys. And there's there's uh, Rudy. You know yeah. what? You can you, you can rip up uh, Nicholas in honor of L. There you go. Ah! Rudy, what do you want to do? There's a there's a giant. Uh, I'd say, I'm sorry, Kaylee or Rudy. Mm-hmm. What do you guys do now? Okay, question. How close is this creature to the rest of us? Very close. It's right <laughs> behind you. It literally ripped Kaylee apart. I, I'm going to shoot it with a shotgun. Not that Kaylee, I have my... I'm sorry. L. L. No L <laughs> So shoot it with a shotgun. So yeah. you get minus two already because yep. it's a shotgun. Yep. Um, yep. So I, minus two is two negatives. Two yep. negatives. Um, so tell me what you're... Okay, okay so and I get another one because I'm going to have a crack shot. Yep. And uh, can I say that because it's there's fire, it's melt? It's not a real snowman. Uh... Don't tell him that. <laughs> no, uh, but I will give you. Um, I say the fire is still an aim asset. for the eyes. True. The beady cold yeah, the eyes. fire is asset. Uh, yeah, I'll give you an asset for uh, one more for fire because you can see it now. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that is since I have correct shot. Okay, so, so you have one success. One six, uh, which cancels out everything else. Actually, no, this one success. Yep. Great. So wow. uh, which is uh, plus five damage. So six damage. So you take out, the, you, you fire at this thing, and it, it, it absolutely takes off a chunk out of it, and it stumbles back, kind of falls back like one of those dummies that you punch, but then it slowly gets back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My magic hat, <laughs> <laughs> Angela. It, it, it's like staring off you at you guys in menacingly as it screams about you. Almost knocked off my hat. Uh, I'm going to run. Yeah. Great. So you take off like a bat out of hell. I, uh, we have a, a general direction for where the car should be, right? right. Uh, yeah. You guys stumble. You kind of all. Who's running? So yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, after, after this, after this shot, I'm, I have been. <laughs> okay. So you guys kind of congregate. In the middle, because this this snowman definitely blocks your way the way you came in. So you guys kind of get in the middle. So let's let's just recap before we go on our break. There's a snowman to the left of you, and there's a tree to the right. Here I am. You're stuck in the middle <laughs> with you. So right now there's a burning fire kind of sweeping around you. You guys look around. You guys are fearful, so I need you to make willpower check to see if you can keep your... uh, You know what? Make a logic check, because right now you seem to be trapped. Mm -hmm. So uh, I need you... Here's some minuses. Fire. Mm -hmm. That is a a minus, because it is a fear of being burned alive. Mm -hmm. And another minus is terrifying presence Mm -hmm. of every (laughs) presence. (laughs) And I'm going to include one more negative for myself because I have no sense of direction. Great. Terrifying presence because we're stuck in the middle with Yule. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I shouldn't have done that. Okay. So make a logic roll. See if you you guys have any pluses. Tell me. Since we're we're trying to figure something out with Puzzle Master. Trying to get, yeah, yes. Trying to get a figure out how to escape the fire right now because it seems like Can I use man in the chair as an asset because I can call in Diego to help me out? Mm -hmm. Sir, I need your help here. Please. I'm adding another negative to me because I am prone to distraction. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have one positive going for me, folks. Uh, This is logic, right? Logic. Yeah. No. Oh no! Two I stress, fail with two stress. I am going to use focused uh, as I am focused on not dying. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to focus when you don't have empathy for other people. Nice. <laughs> uh, so that is a negative for me, and I took one stress. Oh boy! All, all failed. Uh, all no, success. I made it with two successes. The yes. stoner mate. Okay. I took, I took two stress, but yeah. The smoke is getting to everybody, but there's one person that has, <laughs> has dealt with plenty of smoke. He's burned a lot of trees in his life. He's yeah. burned a lot of trees. You you kind of look around and you realize it looks like everything's on fire, but there's one thing that's not on fire, and it seems like you could probably climb on top of it to jump over. 
Santa's throne. Yep, I immediately, this way, this way, and start running towards Santa's throne. You guys are running, and I, I'm going to do one more. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. We don't have time for that. You guys are running. And as you turn back, look around, glance around, you see burning presents kind of popping after you, their mouths opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing, <laughs> trying to get closer and closer. Okay, and nice. who's the first up the throne? Mate. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I found it. I was about to be first. I literally get like sucked to the side. <laughs> because I'm a gym rat and you smoke way too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so first you, Donnie's next, Kylie's next, and pulling up the rear because it's kind of honorable I'm going to make, sir, is Rudy. You take a one or two shots at these things as they're jumping for you. Rudy, you pull yourself up. You're Boop, barely escapes uh, the chomping of a uh, jack in a box, and you guys all fall over onto the, the onto the uh, onto the floor as Santa's village erupts in fire. And in the distance, you hear something hit the roof with a clatter, and you hear ho ho ho. Shadowy conspiracies, ravening beasts, the cold embrace of the void. These are just some of the dangers awaiting those who stand between the innocent and the multitudes ready to destroy everything we believe in. And the way our heroes roll, whether in Warhammer 40,000, Delta Green, Numenera, or any number of other games we've tried, they'll probably encounter these dangers sooner rather than later. Join us at theredactedfiles.com. All right, that sounds like a fantastic podcast. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Like, that's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure they have a Patreon. Check it out. Yeah. So, you guys hear something land on top of the roof of this mall. There's a clatter. Boom, 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 boom. What is that? I'm going to some more reindeer. Diego <laughs> says, you all, you all hear that? Yeah. Yeah. You need to get to the car. There's something. There's some. Oh my god. Diego. Oh my god. Sir, sir. Diego, Diego, do not die on me. You are a Hispanic man working for a predominantly white corporation. Do you have any idea what this is going to look like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the saddest thing ever. That's his dying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he hears, the last thing he hears. As so he dies, his only regret is that he damaged the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys. Are standing. There's Santa's village behind you, burning. There is definitely uh, something on top of the roof. Uh, where are you heading? The car. The car. Car. Okay. All right. The car's over there. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna look right at the stoner and be like, "The car is over there. I'll cause a distraction. You try to make a break for it. Okay. Let us know when you're over there." <laughs> Who is going to try to see through bullshit? So Me. that is a charisma check. He's going to try charisma. Yes. Yeah, so he's trying to charisma. The rest of us are trying empathy. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I think this might. I mean, obviously, if we have any features that would not would go against us, but yep. otherwise, I'd say there's probably no no difficulties. Just who gets the most successes? Yep. So yep. tell me. Uh, so go ahead, roll. Yep. So if you have any features, so everybody gets one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me what features will help you get an extra dice to roll. I'm gonna say I've got easily flustered, so I'm gonna take a negative on that. Okay. I got. Oh, sorry, not e uh, easily pressured. Sorry, is what I mean. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Easily I, pressured. I don't have. I don't have any positives that will help me out in this. Oh, wait, so you get one positive, and it's empathy, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, I really want somebody to have a chance here. I've got no negatives going for me, so I'm going to take uh, two stress and push myself to give myself two more positive deaths. Oh, I forgot I could do that. Okay. And David, you're going to be rolling charisma to try mm -hmm. to get through this. So these are empathy because they're mm -hmm. trying to detect you. Mm -hmm. You're trying to be a dick. Uh, I'm going to take a positive for the money man feature. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take it. You know what's expensive? Cars. You know what isn't? <laughs> Whatever the fuck this guy is. <laughs> Lives. I'm also going to risk, I'm also gonna risk <laughs> two stress lives. myself just in case. I don't take any stress. I'm just letting this happen. Yeah. Let's see. Two successes. Uh, I'm gonna one success. A, one success and one stress. I'm going to take a stress to add one more die to okay. this. Yeah. Oh. And let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I took a stress. I got one success. And charisma is my best stat. And I still blew two dice on it. So I got one success and one I stress. I checked it. There was a pause. And we all, I think all of us made it, right? Yeah. Well, well, all of well us, we matched. Well, oh. two of us matched it. And you succeeded. Yeah. Oh, no, I, okay. I straight oh. up succeeded. Okay. Okay. So, so you're stressed, David. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a narrative. You, mm -hmm. got, you said you got two stress? 
Uh, yeah, I took a stress in, yeah, 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 two stress. Your stress is this. There's a silence, as you said, I, I got this, guys. You know, go. I'll, I'll just, I'll cause a distraction. Kylie, you stare at him, there's a beat, and then you just pop him right in the face. <laughs> oh, God! Now you may take over because yeah. you know he's lying. He's He was trying to pocket the keys. How does that make sense <laughs> to take the keys with you if you're into distraction? <laughs> and you punch him and he drops the package as he brings both of his uh, hands to his now broken nose. It, and uh, Kylie grabs it and she holds it up to the two idiots. <laughs> he's going to be the distraction. Why does he have the keys? That's a good question. That- Oh, wow. Okay. That's okay. Not, it's not what it looks like. Uh-huh. I forgot I had them. It's Christmas. Of course I was holding a present. Then you're, <laughs> then you're fine being distraction now? What? But, um, she's got the keys now. It's a clown. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Now I've got the keys. It's funny. I associate you with that word three times, too. <laughs> <laughs> As you look up, as you hear almost crying uh, singing, you see a couple of protesters, your old friends, Angela, a couple of people who are walking uh, the streets and uh, the tents. You see a couple, you even see uh, the uh, the YouTube star, the one who sang Christmas is my oxy. Uh, they're pressed against the balcony, uh, you, something pressed against their back. And you notice that tensile is like wrapped around them, almost like a reef is actually wrapped around them and squeezing them and forcing them to sing. So, yeah, they, they, they are singing, you know, Christmas carols, like, through weeps, as you hear something suddenly, you, you hear something break through the door that you originally came into this mall through. The, not the lobby where it has the car, but something just rips through it, and you hear, ho, ho, ho. So that's that. What do you guys do now? Running. We're going to run to the car. Yeah, you guys yeah. are taking off towards yeah. the car? Yeah. So you guys are running mm-hmm. as quickly as you can. And as you are running, I'm going to need you to guys make some, uh, some oh, no. a dexterity roll. Because mm-hmm. oh, right no. now, <laughs> oh, no. right now things are getting in your way. Uh, reefs are reaching out for you. Trees, ornaments are falling and clattering to the ground. Uh, toys are occasionally, like little planes are flying by, firing like little pellets at you guys. It's just... A menagerie of horrible, horrible Christmas cliches come to life. They say there's a war on Christmas. Well, Christmas decided to win this fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, negatives. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say toys. Mm-hmm. Negatives. I'm going to say trees. Negative. I'm going to say elves. You got three negatives coming at you. Try your best. Dan, I know you have very low dexterity. Yeah, no, I'm going to die. Uh, but you can always use a str- – remember, you can always use uh, – Yeah, I'm going to take some stress to, to try. And okay. anyway, also, so I've got the two negatives you gave us. I'm taking one more negative because couch potato. Yeah. And I only have one positive and my dexterity okay, is one. I'm going to include another so, negative because I have bad balance. Yes. So, Unless somebody wants to become a distraction and give everybody a, a positive. Nah, fuck yeah, you. you guys know what that is. So oh, good. Work to, to how many? Uh, take two stress, gain one die. Is that? I know uh, it's one for one. one. So, so one stress gives you one. So I'm gonna take two stress and I'm take one die. Do the same. Uh, take two I'm die. Going to. Um, would my yoga positive yep. feature help? Keeping you, my balance. You're keeping your balance. Sure. Mm-hmm. Still gonna die. I believe in myself. Die. I'm a Dead. I failed. Oh, no. oh, let me see. Oh, that cancels no, that out. No, no, no. Um, that cancels out. Failed and took one oh, stress. Wait. No, wait. I failed and took two stress. I failed and took two stress. Wow. Okay, hey, Dave. Uh, all right, so that's two negatives, you said? Three yep. negatives? Yep, mm-hmm. three, three negatives. negatives. Okay, cool. Uh, I so am going fail, to... fail, fail, fail? Yes. yes. I'm going to take a positive for gym rat. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, I am going to, okay, I want to take a positive for team player, but I'm really not. No. <laughs> oh my God, that was a positive. <laughs> um, so just the, yeah, just the two and then three negatives. And yeah, I'm going to take another negative for nearsighted because I, because I can only see the things that are directly in front of me. So here we go. Oh, that's not great. 
That is... <laughs> and none of that canceled. None out. of it canceled. Oh. oh, no. He rolled six dice. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Jesus. Yeah. What? Impressive. Impressive. Oh, my God, you're right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, I think this game wants you to die. <laughs> you what dice want me to die? <laughs> Uh, so it's my thing. All right, so, so I took four again. stress. Take, I guess. Okay, take your stress. So you all failed. Oh, yes. Yeah. You guys are running. The first to fall is dying. Oh, yeah. As something wraps around your uh, your uh, leg and you realize it's a ribbon. And then you're just covered in ribbons around one leg as they drag you. And you get kind of stuck against one of the railings. Mm-hmm. The ah! second person that get, gets uh, attacked is Angela. An ornament, sharp, slams into the back of your head, Uh. and you stumble, (laughs) and you fall against the railing, and that tensile wraps around you. (laughs) Hey, Zeus, Rudy, you are booking it as fast as you can, but then you trip on micro-machines. You fall on the ground, the tensile wraps around you and pulls you back Ah! to the railing, where they're tied, and finally the gym rat. You're running, you're running, and as you turn, you slam in to a... Pile of blankets, it feels like. Fur covered blankets. And as you slowly look up at this wall of blankets, you realize that it's a coat. And instead of just, you know, a wall that you can easily walk around, climb over, it's breathing. And this mat, this stench of mildew mm-hmm. and just laundry that's been left out in the, in the cold for far too long mm-hmm. hits you. And you look up and you realize this wall has a beard and a hat and two eyes that look to be made out of coal. Ho, oh, oh. ho. And he grabs you and slings you and you fly back, slamming into the rail and that tinsel wraps around you. Ah, ho. Oh. Stepping out forward on hooved feet. Is Krampus. Elves dance around him in excitement. Occasionally he'll reach out and grab one and rip into it and eat it and toss the remains to the side. The others explode into laughter as that happens. A couple of them decide to bite into their friends as if mimicking their master, killing them, blood spurting out of the bite wound. Toys f- f- move around you guys excitedly. And Krampus walks forward, his stench filling your nostrils, and he leans forward, sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. And then he looks towards Mr. Michael, leans forward and takes a big hit off of you, man. That's our money. (laughs) (laughs) And suddenly he reaches out with his fingers that are almost like claws, and he slashes down. Each of you take a point of stress as he cuts through the, the ribbons, but he does definitely gets, gets you all. Oh, yeah. He steps back as you fall to your knees in front of him. Oh, 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 regurgitate something and it lands right in front of you. Oh no. It's a present covered in saliva and mucus. And it says on top of, on a tag, Michael. And he looks at you, Michael, expectantly. Kylie. Kylie, go open the present. (laughs) Kylie, my name's not on it. No. You seem like the kind of person who puts people's presents. He Shit. Is, he Fine. is stomping his uh, cl- his his hooves, cracking the uh, the floor underneath it. Okay. Okay. Okay, big guy. Okay. Hey. Thanks for the gift. And I edge towards it slowly and delicately with just the tip of my fingers, open up, unwrap the bow, and then knock the top off. You knock the top off and you reach in with shaken hands. And you pull out. A bell. And it seems like it's one of those bells that would hang off uh, a, a reindeer or a dog sleigh. Like a jingle some, bell. A jingle mm-hmm. bell, absolutely. And it jingles a little bit in your hand, but it sounds kind of like uh, something caught in a rusted tin can. 
It's not nice. It's not wonderful. It's not cheerful. It's cheap. And then he looks at you and make and does a symbol to for you to open your mouth. Um, oh, I open my mouth so like like this. Wider. <laughs> he makes it for you to get wider and wider until it's almost painful. <laughs> <laughs> then he sh- puts the bell in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And then gently closes your mouth, and it's just there right now. Hmm. <laughs> and cut to like third grade where a teacher's yelling at me like Michael DuPont one day science is going to figure out how to shut you up <laughs> <laughs> and then he stands up and he holds out a hand and a, a giant like tin soldier something from like this toy store marches towards him and gives him what looks to be uh, looks like a lamp post that has been taped all the knives, from every knife that they could find from the Home Depot has been taped to it. And then he kind of walks up towards you, each of you, and taps you slowly on the nose with these blades. This <laughs> bladed battle axe knife blade. <laughs> <laughs> and then he lands on Rudy. Uh-oh. And places it on the side of your head. Then he pulls back, <laughs> ready to swing, and then suddenly... Something slams into the side of his head, a Molotov cocktail. And riding on one of those mall security carts (laughs) is Diego. The hero of our age, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Holding one last beer bottle full of alcohol and uh, rag stubbed in. And as he's riding, he screams, I hate Christmas! I'm Jewish! (laughs) (laughs) And he throws another one. It slams into... Uh, Krampus, who lets out a snarl, and Krampus turns towards him, stomping angrily, and takes hold of the entire cart as it smashes into Krampus. And Krampus doesn't even budge, but he's holding on to this cart. And Diego leans forward, that snarl on his face, and he says, Feliz Navidad, you son of a bitch. And then he just basically reaches down, pulls open, you know, whatever, like he has like a sack full of. A sack full of jolly. And, yep. Uh, and of course, Krampus looks down, looks towards it, and inside, as Diego opens it up, it looks like Diego has just basically uh, manufactured a small, basically explosive from like like some of the firework display that was supposed to go mm-hmm. off. Boom! As fireworks start just flying out everywhere, Krampus. That definitely makes Krampus stumble back as. Things explode in his face. Some whiz off left and right. A couple of elves get hit. Mm-hmm. Snowmen are running for their lives. Mm-hmm. Diego's dead. Okay. <laughs> but you guys, what do you do? Right Run. now, there's a distraction. Where's the key? And In Angela's hands. Aha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> run. Yep. You guys run. Yep. yep. David, you mm-hmm. are too busy running. You don't even realize. You never spat out the jingle bell. Mm-hmm. As in, you, it's not in your mouth anymore. <gasps> So it's going to be a real interesting morning tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you are running as fast as you can. You guys spot the car uh, in the distance. It is a shining beacon of hope. Disgustingly, it is in a manger. <laughs> David? <laughs> well, the other wise men were supposed to bring gifts. <laughs> One of them was a bike. <laughs> Sweet bike. Oh, so sw- uh, Not the time. Yeah. You climb into this escalade immediately. Who's driving? Me. I've got the keys. Yeah. Right. You pop it re- the, the car, uh, the keys in the car, and it gives that reassuring brrr, as the engine starts. This is disgusting. That's gasoline. Not the time. <laughs> and suddenly you look in the mirror as you adjust it and you see Krampus just marching towards you. Hit racing. the gas. Hit the gas. You hit the gas and you peel out of this, this, uh, you peel out of this lobby heading towards the shatterproof, uh, doors. And you really hope that you can get enough energy out. And Angela, I'm going to make a roll. I would like to assist. Yep. Me yep. as well. I would like to shoot at the shatterproof wall to weaken so, it. So everybody, everybody that's doing something to assist gives me a positive okay. die. Yes. So is it dexterity yeah, drive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dexterity drive because you need to avoid stuff. Yep. All right. So we've got somebody shooting out the door. Yep. Who else is assisting? I am also, sh- yeah. also shooting out the door. Okay. All right. 
I'm just gonna die in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, you're <just laughs> totally fine. You're... Um, I having a giant friggin' Escalade is yes. A positive. Yes. Uh, negative. Shatterproof ground and uh, Krampus on your ass. Ask uh, Krampus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the book has an example of a positive feature, and it is running for your life. <laughs> yes, I will give you that. Now let's go. Let's break a roll. Okay. All right. And you know what? I'm going to fill out that last stress nice. track or last point in that stress track. So I've got one, two, three, six positive here, two negative. What are the chances you fit? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so my dex is three. So this is a success. One success. This is a success. Um, Those cancel out. Those cancel out. Those cancel out. So two successes, one stress, which I soak. Yeah. You crash through this window, easily through it, smash through, and dashing through the snow in a five-horse Escalade. (laughs) You are speeding through. Some of the reindeer are trying to give, uh, give chase, but what? Ever. <laughs> and you are flying through this parking lot, dodging left and right. Krampus tries to keep up. But slowly but surely, as soon as you get out of the parking lot, and honestly, you're just driving down ro- roads, heading towards the skyscrapers in the distance, he's gone. And you drive. And there's nobody outside because there's so much snow. There's snow everywhere. It is it, when you first came in. It was two feet. It has to be four feet of oh snow almost. It is it, about three feet. It is ridiculous. And but, LA does not have snow plows. No, but this Escalade is doing everything that it can to keep going, which is a hell of a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Angela, you drive, and then suddenly it feels there's headlights in front of you, and. You, Go left and it adjusts and go right and it adjusts. And then you are forced to hit the brakes and you come to a skidding halt right in front of the headlights. And now I'm taking narrative control again. I pretty much did already, but you guys all climb out of the car as you... What's going on? You realize the headlights that were approaching is actually yours. What the hell? And as you move towards... The other car, the other Escalade, you realize it's a reflection. And slowly you all reach out and you touch hold of glass. A giant glass wall in front of you. It has to be a couple yards thick, it looks like. And as you peek through, pressing your fingers, your hands against the glass, you look out. And it's murky and dark out there. You can hardly see anything. Then suddenly there's a giant eye. In yeah. Yeah. Almost seems like it's made out of coal. Ho, ho, ho. You hear a thick, familiar, and booming laugh of Krampus. And suddenly, giant fingers wrap in front of you, and the world shakes as you are lifted up. Oh, it's an earthquake. Mm-hmm. And as the this week. <laughs> and as the camera pulls back, it shows hulking figure carrying a snow globe towards a shelf. He places it right on top of that shelf. And looking out as he backs away, there are dozens of snow globes, some with houses, some with trailers in them, some with hotels, some with whatever. And every one of them has people banging on the glass. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa from Fandible to you. Woo! Woo! Yeah. That was Krampus 2, everybody. Brought nice to you work. by the Fandible Podcast Network <laughs> and Straight to Home Video. If you like this <laughs> and more videos or podcasts like it, check us out at Fandible. We also have a Patreon. We have a Twitter. We have a Facebook. We have everything and all things. And most of all, we have love and hope for mankind. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for listening. Oh, my God. Yay, we're done.